I'm on my way now to what Mike said is a Taj Mahal. So they have, they're having an issue with one unit and they want maintenance on the other. Well, they want maintenance on all the units, but I think it's a total of three. So let's see if I can fix the issue and get some video of doing maintenance. Um, it's a pretty boring video to record maintenance, but I don't know, maybe you'll see something exciting and I'll record it, but let's see. I'm at my first uh, condenser unit that the customer's complaint was it wasn't turning on. Uh, I got the other two units running, uh, just making sure that everything looks good with those, but I came out to this unit and it wasn't super, super tiny old unit from 2005. Pulled the cover off and this is what I see. No connection on the wires. Now if I push the contactor in, it turns on. So I'm gonna get some Wagos and connect these with Wagos because wire nuts is the reason that this disconnected. So we got our unit running now. It's discharging a little bit of heat. Uh, I put the gauges on because it didn't feel too cold to me. It's definitely getting colder as it runs for a little bit longer. But here is our pressures and I lost my sub cooling probe. Let's see. Really, really high superheat. Um, but our sub cooling's around okay. It's an R22 system, so I don't want to charge it if I don't have to. It's definitely getting really cold. And I'm going to see if it's cooling inside and let. And I'll let the customer know what's going on with his pressures and how it's running. It's a very small unit. Um, maybe even clean the coil, but we'll see. As the probe, as the probes are sitting there and getting up to the temperatures of the pipes, it's we're heading more towards the green area. Uh, I definitely think this unit's charge is okay. Um, I know one of the units is hard to get to inside for the air handler, but I'll show you those. Okay, so here's our air handler for that unit. And I'm gonna open it up, take a look at the blower motor and the capacitor. Uh, it may be an ECM motor, I'm not exactly sure, but I'll open it up and we'll see. Okay, so I've been running around like crazy. Not that that's a bad thing. But this customer has so many questions and issues. He's a new homeowner to this house. And he just had me take a look at his Navy. And his condensate pump was no good. So I swapped out that pump for him. Because he's been dumping out pockets every day. But I told him that maybe... Since he has so much going on, it'd be best if we came back another day to take a look at everything else. But... I'm going to check out this capacitor and continue with the AC maintenance. And I got my leads on the capacitor on the meter, 12.08. It's set for 12.5. Uh, so what is it, 11.8 or so would be bad. So we know this one's good. I'm going to put that back and move on. Uh, I know this unit's cooling well. I did treat the condensate pan and I blew out the condensate drain trap. Um, we're going to do that for all the units. And fan motor is nice and clean, amperage, amperage is good, but I killed power so that I could take it apart and test things. Uh, overall, his units look pretty good. They're from around 2005, all of them. And the outdoor units, particularly the smaller unit, definitely is seeing better days. But he is looking into possibly replacing in the future, so he's not really worried about doing anything crazy or any cleanings like that right now. So it is what it is. In my lucky day, I get to replace a 75 microfarad capacitor, reading out a 42.7. Customers say go ahead and replace it. And I actually tested it dynamically, but I'm just proving for the video that it is bad by testing it with the meter. So I'll go ahead and wire the new one back in and secure it. Got it in, plug the disconnect in, and it's ready to go. Now to move on to the next one. I really did not get much footage at all there because this customer just had so many questions and he has so much going on in this house. He is a Navian tankless for line, his hot water. Left. He has a, um, a, uh, sorry, a cop. He has a, 
has a Wild McLean Eco for his heat, which I've never seen before. It's a wall hung system. Uh, it, it needs a little bit of work, and he has radiant manifolds coming off of that, except he doesn't have radiant. Well, he has radiators, but he doesn't have in-floor radiant. And I, I guess the temperature is destroying his manifolds. Um, he has two forced air furnaces separate from his AC uh, with thick filters. Uh, he's got condensate pumps and he needs everything looked at and I just couldn't look at it all today. I told him to schedule an appointment for heating because the AC alone was enough. Uh, he had some thermostat issues that we got figured out. He had filters all over the place. Filters in the returns, filters in big filter the cabinets near the units, and then filters in the units themselves. And they were all black. So I told him he has to just keep filters in one area. If he's going to use it in the unit, then use it in the unit. Or if you're going to use it in the grills, then use it in the grills. Because the dirt in all these filters was actually causing one of the units to freeze. Um, but all his units are working fine. I replaced that capacitor. Um, that smaller unit doesn't seem to be doing its best, but it's cooling. All his units are cooling and cooling pretty nicely. So in one mile, got a lot right done there. Horton Avenue. And I'm on my way now to pick up a Bosch from the shop that I need to return for a different Bosch because they gave us the wrong Bosch, a Green Star. And. And I have three more calls, so maybe I'll record those as well. But I think that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed the video, like it, comment if you have any criticisms or advice, uh, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm here at this call for five minutes now, and problem solved. This thermostat is old thermostat. They put a nest in. They put this back yesterday. Uh, it was wired wrong. First thing I did was turn the thermostat on for cooling, and of course, nothing happened. I went up into the attic to take a peek at what we had, which is right there, and that looked like a brand new system to me. I didn't think there would be anything wrong with it, um, parts-wise. I didn't know about the thermostat being changed until I asked the homeowner about it, but when I came up here, saw these, so I immediately jumped out G and R, fan came on, I figured out which was common and which was condenser, I jumped out R and condenser, and it came on. The system's running, my lines are getting nice and cold. The homeowner had, or whoever had replaced the thermostat, had switched around RC and RH but rather than just switch them around they put the RC onto common so that caused the issue there was no uh, power going to anything from that thermostat Peter's getting a step stool now because I did pick up Peter on the way here and he is taking the filter out the filter is incredibly incredibly dirty and I can't leave the system like that. I'm going to see if they have filters. If not, I'll give them a link to replacement filters, but that was an easy call. And I'll check the condenser outside to make sure that we're cooling properly. Um, I mean, it's definitely cooling well here, so I don't think I have any need to put gauges on it. She said they haven't had any issues since the install, which was about five years ago. Uh, so I don't see reason to waste any refrigerant. We're not freezing up. Our suction line is nice and cold. And our discharge line is not cold, uh, not super hot, but it's definitely warm. So I think we are all good here. And you can see this filter. I honestly bet it hasn't been changed in the five years since it was installed. So. We'll see if they have replacements. If not, we'll send them the link at filterfetch.com to replace them. When Peter pulled down the air filter, I realized how dirty the return filter bro was. So I'm just brushing all that off. 
so that the customer gets a little more value for their money. The system seems to be very nicely installed, except it's a ream. But uh, they did have a new return air filter, so Peter is going to put that in as soon as I get this all brushed off nicely, and we'll be good to go. So that was a simple call. Uh, now I'm on my way with Peter to Westbury for a, an AC maintenance, and after that I have a... Not Turn working. left onto Terry Place. Green Bell. So, 40 minutes till I get to this call, and probably 20 minutes between this call and the next. Okay, so we're at the unit for the maintenance. Replaced the air filter, and the customer had stated that there was an issue with the condensate pump in the wintertime where it froze, and he turned it off, but it was running continuously for hours, so. Peter's grabbing a bottle of water. We're gonna fill it up and make sure it pumps out properly. As far as the unit itself, I believe it's an ECM blower motor, but I'll take off these screws and take a look inside. So taking a look inside, there's no water underneath showing any signs of leaks. Everything looks really clean. Our fuse is intact and our lower wheel really clean and our motor looks good. This was just installed so we're gonna move right onto the outdoor unit and make sure that everything looks good there. And here's our outdoor unit, another carrier. You could see by these nice bends and the neat work that Mikey Pipes did this. Just waiting for the thermostat to respond to the system since I shut the power down to open up the unit. But uh Overall, the coil looks very clean, and make sure it gets cold, test capacitors, contactors, and see how it goes. So with our unit running, I did an underload capacitor test, which I don't think this will focus in on too well, but you can see that the reading was good, and I tested the fan side as well, and the contactor coil and the overall amp draw for just the unit itself is 8.9 so everything looks good it's getting nice and cold out here nice and hot on the discharge line and nice and hot coming out of the condenser fan motor so we're gonna let it run for a little bit but everything here looks perfect See, we are returning at about 77 degrees, which is about what the thermostat's reading. And for our supply, we've got 57, 58. So this unit is operating perfectly. Now I'm gonna fill out the invoice include that filterfetch.com that way the customer can replenish the supply of return filters and we're all good at the next line take a okay, shot that was turn. nice and simple so now we're on our way to a no cooling call which is 20 minutes away from here and hopefully I can figure it out hopefully it's something that's fixable today uh, we're getting we hit the 5 o'clock mark, so supply houses won't be open for parts if anything's needed, but I have the majority of parts in the back At of the, the truck. Line. Use the left lane um, to take a sharp left turn onto Camp Just no Rock compressors, Road. no ECM motors, and no fan blades, but I think we should be good. Okay. I was wrong before. Uh, this is actually going to be the mini Taj Mahal that Mike had told me about. I just had to mute the iPad so it doesn't give away the location, but this is definitely a Taj Mahal. 
I have to go to a gate and get entrance. We've got our, we got our gates opening. I have to pull around to the garage, which I'll probably get lost on my way to because this driveway is about as big as my block that I live on. And this is a literal castle. So it is one of those slim systems, the slim openings for air, airflow, and it's blowing. So I went outside of the condensers and I can feel that this one is, it's not cold at all. No temperature difference between outside temperature. I'm thinking it's this one, so I have Peter going to shut the thermostat off. If this one turns off, then I know it's this, and we'll take a look at the issue. Let's see. They've got a massive pool here. This house is just incredibly huge. Uh, they have one, two, three, four. I think I saw four more systems on the other side of the house. It's crazy. Okay, I got the cover off, and as soon as I pulled this cover off, I had an immense amount of heat just like come up and hit me in the face. This compressor is scalding, scalding, scalding hot. And the capacitor up here is, it looks to be blown apart. So I just killed power from the panel over there. And I'm gonna start taking a look at everything and seeing what the issue here is. Okay, so I just got the, pulled the capacitor off. I'm gonna remove the leads from it carefully. You could see how this one's totally blown apart. And I mean I don't even know if it's worth testing. It's almost guaranteed it's no good, but I'm going to get my meter out and test it. And Pete is going to grab the camera to record it. It's a 45, and from Herm to our common, what do we have? Oh, 32. Huh. Oh, it's hissing. Okay, well, I'm just trying to stay away from that, because my friend literally just texted me from Delaware, a capacitor just blew up in his face today, and I don't want that happening to me. Taking a look at everything else, contactor appears to be okay. A lot of debris. Uh, don't see much information on this unit, it's probably covered up. Refrigerator. HCFC 22. So it's an R22 system. And I think it seems like it's low to me. But I'll pull the. Thingy Mabobber off the compressor terminals. And we'll see how those look. And so far, so good. And I'll test the resistance on the coils, but I'm gonna have to use my phone to look up what the resistance needs to be for this specific compressor. I'm gonna guess that it's open right now because it's probably overheated, but maybe not. Okay, Peter took a picture of the resistances that I need, and surprisingly, it's not uh, open right now. But for our start, we need 1.72. For our run, we need 0.905. So I'm going to put it to those leads and Peter is going to record what we get here. So from 
run to common. This is what we have. What are you getting? 1.6, 1.5. Steadily? 1.5 steadily, yeah. 1.6. Okay. We'll go one more time. <coughs> One point four, one point five, one point six, one point five. Okay. And now from start to common. Two point six. Two point six. Oh. It stays steady at that? Mm-hmm. Okay. And we needed what? Open that up again for me. One point seven two, right? Let me see. Yeah, 1.7 and 0.9. What were the numbers again? Uh, two. They were, were they both over two? One, only one was over two. Okay, so one was over two. What was the other one? I think one of them was 1.5 and 1.6. 1.5. So that was probably start. And the, the one that's one reading did. two was probably 0.9. Let's see what the first one I did. The first one I did was the start. So the start is good. Six, yeah. But the run is bad, uh, and I'm not, I don't have the fuse thermally open and the compressor's kicking on. So, what I'm going to do now is give Mike a call, because I'm not exactly sure what he would do in this situation. Um, I mean, having a compressor winding that far off, to me, seems like there is no saving that but I'll give Mike a call see what he thinks and go from there so Mike's words of wisdom to me are to cool the compressor off and then read the windings so I'm going to get the cool presser tool even though it's kind of in a bad area and I don't know if it's gonna be able to work there but I got a hose there and I'll just start running water till it cools down and we'll see, once it's cool, what the windings read. I, uh, when I was looking for the hose, I saw a customer has a chicken coop. I've never used the cool presser yet, and I'm not sure. Where I put it. I have this truck incredibly organized, but if I don't know where I keep something, that's not going to help me. Huh. Well, I'm going to take a look for a little bit and see. Okay, it's not really great with the cool presser because it's a tight spot that it's in but water is flowing over the whole thing and we're just gonna wait wait till it cools down a little bit and then test again and here is that chicken coop just waiting on that compressor to cool down got a couple things got a couple things from the truck my uh, wire connection crimper a spade connector a new capacitor and the testos um, I'm just bringing all this stuff in case I need it, uh, so I'm not making so many trips. I just wanted to get the test out, but I don't want to run back and forth unnecessarily. This house is so nice. And I just wanted to change the filter uh, before I go ahead and charge the system, so I changed that filter. And you can see Space Pack. Uh, one of the high velocity systems. I said high efficiency. Mike corrected me. It's high velocity uh, R22. And suction line really doesn't feel cold at all. Liquid line feels a little bit cold. So I'm going to go ahead with charging the unit. I spoke with Mike and Once we knew the compressor was running, uh, Mike said that just to run it, the customer just wants him ha to have. Uh, the customer just wants to have cooling today. He wants it to be cold now, so 
we're gonna do our best to make that possible and we're gonna have to charge it with our 22 um, can't replace his system right at this moment so that's it he wants the R22 he doesn't want leak detection he doesn't want anything like that so we're gonna charge it and see how it goes walking through this house is massive Charging with the T's, I find it annoying, but I have my R22 gauges, and I leave my high side open and keep the Testo um, probe on there. Not that that's really accurate, but just to get an idea with the Measure Quick app itself. But I charge it through this pressure, and I, I still get that saturation temperature right here, and that's really what I'm looking at. This is just to kind of give me a rough idea to look at the Measure Quick. But I have it hooked up now, and we're zeroing out. And I'm just gonna start adding. Now these are R22 hoses, and they are always filled with R22, so I don't need to purge them. They have the yellow jacket, uh, quick seal, low loss fittings. know that those are keeping any any air from getting in only air is ever coming out see our sub cooling is starting to go up a little bit and let's see our pressure is going up further from that APSI uh, I don't want it to be freezing so keeping it above 32 
lot more heat. Let it sit for a little bit longer. I know we have good airflow inside. I changed the filter. So here is where our pressures are at. They're pretty bouncy. Uh, I'm assuming that there's a little bit of contamination in the system, but it's looking good. Uh, around 8 degrees of self-cooling, plus or minus that one. Our suction line's coming back 52, and our evaporator coil's around 36. I checked inside, and my temperature differential was around 18 degrees uh, from the return in supply which is good, so I think we're going to leave it at that. I'll be back here for preventative maintenance on all these systems, along with the ones on the other side behind the chicken coop. I told him I'd like to clean them all, but he took a look out here and said, oh, they don't look that bad, so I don't think I'll be able to get the chance to do that, but I think that's going to be it here. I use these angle uh, low loss 90s from Yellow Jacket because I just, I never really got quick at putting the gauges on uh, and this keeps that spray from happening. But whenever I put them back, I open it up so that my gauges are sitting at zero. Um, I don't know if it's necessary, but I like to do that to keep it, keep everything nice and working. I got them covered in dye because all these R22 systems have have dye and sealant in them because people don't want to switch over to a 410 or fix the leak. They get the dye put in and then that's it or it's never found. And I don't remember if I showed it but I did get a new capacitor in there with a new connector. Um, let me take a look at something. Okay, so I was curious if like the common and herbin been switched, but I don't even know if that really matters since they're just using it as a single, but it was wired properly. So I'm going to button it back up. Now we're getting nice and cold, so we should be good to go. Okay, so we're all finished for the day. Uh, AC, I guess we're getting super, super busy because of how maintenance is, but it is now 7.16. Definitely a late day, but I feel good about it. I think Peter feels otherwise. Um, this guy has... <laughs> what's so funny? This guy has... A, a crazy amount of systems. I think around 10, and I'm gonna be here for the maintenance, I'm assuming, on all of them. And they're all R22, so he knows he gets a lot of them charged uh, with refrigerant. Uh, he doesn't know, he hasn't been using us for AC, he's only recently started. He's a YouTube subscriber for Mike, so we're gonna probably be replacing unit a year. Uh, that's what this guy was thinking. And he has nice cars. But hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, I don't really care. Uh, 
leave a comment on any advice you have or criticisms or feedback and to the guy who keeps saying to look into the camera when I'm reporting, I can't do that when I'm driving. Uh, I'm not mad, but subscribe.